to see the country from a motorcycle, once you've done that, you never want to see it any other way. It really is one of the best things you can do to release stress and to relax. My two granddaughters are Victoria Elena and Lillian Olivia. Aren't they beautiful? Um, yeah. They're both very smart. They have good manners. Uh, and they love their granddad, which is uh, a, a bonus. Well, music is, is my life. It's, it's always been there in my life. And harmonizing, I love to harmonize. If I could just get somebody to sing the melody and um, stay on key, I do miss it. And not to be able to sing like I used to, um, I, I miss that greatly. I was having problems and I would start coughing and you know, I didn't want to risk having an accident. Uh, there were times when I would be seriously out of breath and panicky, thinking I'm not going to be able to breathe. And Tori, the older one, said, why are you breathing like that? The symptoms, the coughing and problems I was having, now I know it's COPD. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I hadn't heard of it. Emphysema people had heard for years. But to hear COPD, and I thought, well, where does that come, you know, what is that? Have you heard of COPD? It's a serious lung disease that over time makes it hard to breathe. It says here it's the fourth leading cause of death and a leading cause of disability in the U.S. So why have you never heard of it? Well, you might have heard of it called by other names like emphysema or chronic bronchitis. Now here's the thing. The number of people with COPD is increasing every year. More than 12 million people have been diagnosed with it. And there are 12 million more out there who have the disease and don't even know it. So, what puts you at risk? I began smoking as a teenager. Uh, both of my parents smoked. I was in printing, which caused part of the COPD problem, the chemicals. The smoking, I'm sure, was the agitator all along. When I finally stopped smoking, realizing, I, realizing that I had to stop, I was smoking almost two packs a day. You always think it's not going to be me. You know, it's not me, it's going to be somebody else. I thought I was in the clear. I had already quit smoking when I was diagnosed with COPD. COPD most often affects people 40 and over who are either current smokers or former smokers like me. <clears throat> hey, thanks, Anna. It can also occur in people that have had long-term exposure to things in their environment that can irritate the lungs. And in some people, COPD is caused by a genetic condition, even if they've never smoked. But what does it feel like to have COPD? How does it affect your life? Because of the COPD, uh, I have to be aware that I'm going to have to move more slowly, that I will be out of breath more quickly than I used to be. I've always loved gardening. Certain kinds of things that I used to do easily, uh, maybe I need to get somebody else to do. I, <coughs> excuse me. I don't want to be laying there coughing all the time. I don't want to be struggling. I don't want to struggle for that breath. And believe me, I've struggled for it. It's almost like I would have times where I was just gasping for air. I just, it's not like I couldn't catch my breath. I just couldn't breathe. Maybe that was the way of of uh, explaining it. I stopped um, trying to be a rider and became a passenger on the back of his bike. I bet you know people like this. The thing is, they started out by just feeling a little short of breath now and then, maybe coughing a bit. Now, if that happens to you, how do you know if it's something you really should be paying attention to? Well, take a look here. Are you constantly coughing, what we often call smoker's cough? Do you get short of breath doing things that you used to be able to do? Do you ever feel like you can't breathe or can't take a really deep breath? Do you find yourself wheezing? Well, all of these are symptoms of COPD. Look, I'm not a doctor, so let's go talk to somebody who knows all about this stuff. Wonderful. This is Edna. Now, throughout her career as nurse and respiratory therapist, she has worked with many, many people, mm -hmm. helping them to improve their lung function. And it just so happens she has COPD. That's right. All right, Edna, could you please tell me a little bit about how COPD affects your breathing? Sure. Let me show you. All right. When we're healthy, the air sacs in our lungs are elastic. 
shapes. They bounce back to their original shape after being filled with air when we inhale, just the way a balloon would. But in people with COPD, the air sacs no longer do that. They've lost that elastic quality. People with COPD might find that they produce more mucus in their lungs. Both of these factors make it more difficult to breathe air in and out of the lungs. So what should you do if you have some of those risk factors or symptoms that we talked about earlier? You know, it's really important that you talk to your doctor and let him know what you're experiencing. And you should also ask about getting a breathing test called spirometry. It's a simple test that can probably be done in your doctor's office. And I have a video. Spirometry measures how well your lungs function. And blow it out. Your doctor will be able to assess how well your lungs are working and whether or not you need to worry about COPD. So the key here really is getting diagnosed. Absolutely. From there, you and your doctor can come up with a plan to help you breathe easier, relieve your symptoms, and lead a more active life. <laughs> but Edna, you and I both know that not everybody likes going to the doctors, especially if he or she's going to tell them to quit smoking. You know, your doctor can help you find a smoking cessation program that really works. It's tough to quit. You and I both know that. But it's so very important. And I know so many people who've said the same thing. I, 18. The smoking was the hardest of all, and I didn't give it up until the last, and that's what made me suffer the most. You ever bingo, hold your cards. I enjoy moving around, and I also enjoy walking. I, I breathe better, I feel better. I want you to behave. <laughs> I want to be doing. I don't want to sit here. I never thought I would be the person to go to a gym, but it's helped me a lot. Uh, I do at least 45 minutes of aerobic exercise three days a week. So you can manage it through diet, exercise, uh, taking the medications properly. The number of things I do to try and stay healthy, I try to eat right, I try to minimize my contact with different irritants. I take my medications, I get my flu shots, I have my pneumonia vaccine, and doing some deep breathing exercises. I'm maintaining a healthy attitude uh, and a positive attitude. Well, I have many reasons that I want to manage the COPD. I have my friends, I have my children, my grandchildren. I want to see what's going to happen with these two girls. They're so young now that I have to do everything I can to be able to, to stay around. So if you smoke now, or if you've ever smoked, even years ago, or you've been exposed to fumes or chemicals, or you have any of the symptoms that we talked about earlier, you might be at risk for COPD. Talk to your doctor and get tested. And remember, if you're one of the millions of Americans dealing with this disease, you're not alone. Visit www.learnaboutcopd.org for a lot more information and ways to find help. This video is brought to you by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute and the COPD Foundation.